bless you, and whatever that was. <coughs> Four five. Graphing. How many sections are on this one? Um, seven, eight, seven. somewhere up there. Good. Sine and cosine. These two are the most important to know how to graph. There's four other functions that we're going to do. We'll do them all at once, and they're not the prettiest things in the world, but we'll do them simplistically. I'm going to put a lot of effort into graphing sine and cosine so we make sure that we know how to graph them because out of all science, math things, sine and cosine are the most two important functions you could ever deal with. What's that? Graph paper. It might work for this. It's not the best for it's sine and cosine. <laughs> it, it gets funny. Is it sine, isn't the sine and cosine graphing like this? Yeah, they graph? do the wave thing. And waves are amazingly popular. You know, sound, light, what is the vibrations, beach, uh, the beach, washing machines. The beach? What is that graph? Like? Which one? No, I think it's like this. This one? Yeah. This is 1 over x sine of x. Um, oh, is it talking to you? No, no, that's not it. It's sine of 1 over x. It gets a little crazy. I love you saying Sine of 1 over x. And 1 over x is the angle itself. Um, is this the, the worksheet that you gave us the other night? Was that, is that part of like your homework? If you, it's part of your test. I figured you'd want to see yeah, what I'm I giving you. Yeah, I know, but is it going to be like... I, don't, I won't grade it. So if you don't want to do it... <laughs> I mean, I did it. I was That's just saying, I was just More than likely you'll do it. Where does sine and cosine come in handy in the life? It depends on what real life them. you're talking about. Oh, don't ask them, I'm saying what are you, are you going to become? How about this? Ready, right, right? How, what are you going to become? Physical therapist. Physical therapists deal with angles all the time, so you have to be careful. Really? You don't know, so I can't answer it. Yeah. You know, there is. Yeah, a, I know what you're there doing. There is a museum called Melbourne Exercise, and it like yeah. has like this. In the beginning, there's like it's a whole like wow. description of why schools should not make people take pre-cal. Because, because, okay, like the biggest mathematicians, like, fail most people don't use sine and cosine. Yeah, they don't most use, people. Yeah. But why? if you get lean into the sciences or biology or math, you, you, know you might need to be. We're engineering well, with that trick. What's really cool is you can create any function in terms of those two huh? functions. Yeah. Yeah. Polynomial doesn't yeah, even matter, you can create it out of those two. Yeah. I don't know, I kind of want to go to the MoMath Yeah, I'm just trying to go on. Huh? Field trip! Farming is more maximizing, so you do probably stay away from sine and cosine, and you deal with more linear programming. And trust me, sine and cosine is easier than linear programming. How about if you learn engineering? You need sine and cosine. <laughs> and exponential, they have logarithms, pretty much everything else. What if you just want a diploma? You take a diploma <laughs> one, just hand it over. Uh, you want me to get into the theoretics of why people learn math? Sure. We'll do that later. Because math teaches you how to use your brain. Everything else you just memorize. Because math is the basic unit of language for people. I don't want to speak to aliens. Ah, so, all right, cool. shh, shh, we're starting now. First thing up, we have to change uh, sine and cosine into functions. So I'm going to create a function. Its domain is going to be x. Now, x is going to be what we used to call theta. Since theta is just a variable anyways, we can let x interchange with it. So now we're going to choose x to be... The angle theta, this is not the same x, it's on the unit circle where we say x is equal to cosine theta. This is totally different. This is the angle that a function's going to go through. And the function we're going to be looking at is sine of x. I have a question. Does it matter if we use theta or omega? Nope, doesn't matter. That's what I'm saying. Variables are interchangeable. But for our purposes of graphing, we need x's and y's. So we can plot on the x-axis and plot on the y-axis. So... To graph this, we're going to have to do a little bit of a table. So we're going to choose values for x, and we're going to generate values for sine of x. But we're only going to choose values of x that we know a little bit about. For instance, we're going to start at 0. The next angle that we know anything about? Pi over 6, which is 30 degrees. Next one up? Pi over 4. Next one? Pi over three. Next one? Pi. 
pi over two. two. Pi. Next one, two pi over three. Two pi over three. Next one, three pi over four. Five. Three pi over four. And five last five. one, five pi, five, pi, pi, pi over six. And yeah. last one, pi. You just said pi. Last. pi. I'm sorry, I forgot about four pi. All right. Okay. At least this gives us the top half of the unit circle. This is the way I think about it. These angles are in the top half. So if you think about it, these angles are in quadrant one on a unit circle. They're not in quadrant one necessarily of the graph. So we have to kind of separate what the unit circle does and what the graph does. They're totally different. These angles are in quadrant 2. So when we move our sine into quadrant 2, think about it. In quadrant 1, what's the answers of sine going to be? Positive. Positive. In quadrant 2, the answers are going to be? Negative. Oh, positive. Positive. All students. All students. So both of these answers are going to be in the positive. When I get down to quadrant three ones, they're going to be negative, negative and quadrant four are also going to be negative. 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 All, right. All right, what is the sign of zero? Well, where do I get these answers from? Well, I get them from a couple pictures. Number picture one, that you need to be able to just copy down on your test right when you get it. The unit circle. You do that? You have to. When you pick up your test, or I hand it out, this is the first thing you should draw. Well, on a scrap circle. piece of paper, when when I give it to you, just draw these down. Well, the unit circle ever have any other uh, coordinates? The only ones that you really need to know are those four, because you can't use a special triangle to come up with pi over two, pi, three pi over two, or zero. Could it ever become like zero, two, three, zero, 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 zero? It's a unit circle, so no. It has to have a radius of one. <laughs> Inside it, I highly suggest you put in yeah, all students see. take yeah. calculus. So that picture takes care of two things. It takes care of the signs of the trig functions and those weird angles, which I call the four corners. Next picture you should draw, 30, 60, 90. So here's pi over 6. This is 1, 2, square root of 3. And of course, the last picture should be your 45, 45, 90, which is pi over 4, 1, 1, square root of 2. Um, yes. What's that? Pi over 6 is 30 degrees. It's across from the shortest side. Shortest side. Now, if you draw these three pictures down, it answers like 90% of my test questions for this chapter. Really? Yeah, because, awesome. I mean, pretty much if you know these, you know trick. If you can, you know, also, well, while we're at it, some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on S. I'm sorry. Those four things will answer about 90% of the questions on the test. Okay, so when I come over here and I say, well, x is equal to 0, what sign of 0 equal to? What picture do I have to look at? If I'm looking for the sign of 0, what picture do I have to look at? The unit circle. So sign of 0 is equal to? 0. It's the second quadrant, or coordinate. So this is 0. Then I get to pi over 6. What picture do I have to look at? 30, 60, 90. And the sign of pi over 6 is? Opposite over hypotenuse, which is? Half. How did you get zero? The unit circle, sine is the second coordinate. But x is zero. Okay. X is zero. So on a unit circle, the angle zero corresponds with this line right here. The coordinate is one, zero. But you don't get confused between what x is over here and what x is over here. I tried to say in the beginning that this x has nothing to do with the unit circle x, where x is equal to cosine of theta. Okay. Um, would it also work if it's on the other side? I'll just memorize we'll the graph. So, <laughs> memorize the graph. Okay. So, sine is the second coordinate, which is zero, so you get sine zero is zero. All right, pi over four? 45, 45, 45. Uh, it's one over the square root of two. Square root of two over two, one over square root of two, either one works perfectly fine. Pi over three, back to this picture, but it's not this angle, it's the one up here. Square root of two. Opposite over hypotenuse, square root of three over two. And pi over 2, where do I look? Uh, unit circle. circle. Unit circle. And the sine of uh, pi over 2, which is up here, one. is 1. It's the second coordinate. So this is 1. Now we come back the other way. 2 pi over 3 is going to have the same answer as pi over 3. Why? Because 2 pi over 3 has a reference angle of pi over 3, and sine in the second quadrant is positive. So it doesn't change its answer. So it's going to be square root of 3 over 2. 
Same thing for 3 pi over 4. Its reference angle is? Square pi over 4 squared of 2 over 2. 5 pi over 6? Pi? Zero. We're back to 0 because we're over here on the unit circle. Sine is 0. Oh, yeah. we got to no. figure out the second half of it. Man, Sam. Anyway. We had to anyway. Sam, stop it. Alright, what's the next angle after pi? Uh, <laughs> after pi? Is that 5 pi over 6 is right here. Uh, 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6. Then you got 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4. You have 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3. And you have 3. Oh, you go on the like way like, that for me. Yeah, but it's closest to the x-axis, halfway between the x and the y, closer to the y-axis. Next one. And what are we at now? 3 pi over 2. two. Next one. 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3. 7 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4. 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6. And you got 2 pi. And then finally 2 pi. 2 pi. Okay. Our, math teacher, second, our math like, teacher managed to draw that out and then try to reach one in high school. It's pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. pretty cool. And then, of course, sine of x down here. Uh, can you, which one is that? Um, all of them. Um, third quadrant? Oh, oh. These are third quadrant angles, Q3. And these are Q4. So both of these, since it's sine, are going to be. <coughs> Size be negative. 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 So I don't even have to worry about it. I can still go back to my pictures over there. I know my answers are all going to be negative here. So, plug them in. 7 pi over 6 is going to be exactly the same as pi over 6 because it has a reference angle, but it's going to be negative 1 half. Pi over 4 is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. Pi, uh, 4 pi over 3 is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Ah. Yeah, that's right. And 3 pi over 2 is down here. And sine is going to be negative, negative, negative one. one. So you get negative one here. And then you come back up. Negative square root of three over two. Negative square root of two over two. Negative one half. And finally, zero. zero. So this gives us our table for sine. That's the whole unit circle right there. That is the whole unit circle right there. So if I'm going to graph this, <coughs> when I put in the x and the y axis, uh, Marker's dying already. It's really sad. You like bear down on your markers too. I have beat on them horribly. What markings do I have to put on the y axis? The y? Uh huh. Um, what, do you, what do you mean? One. Well, do I have to go up to 10 and down to negative 10? Mm -hmm. What's the highest I'm going to get? One. One, maybe. Because remember, the range of sine and cosine is one change, to negative right? one. So up here is going to be a one. Down here is going to be negative 1. I highly suggest you put in negative 0.52 halfway. It comes in handy. And on the x-axis, we just have to cut this into those pieces. It's going to get a little messy. So it basically works out this way. Here's pi over 3. Here's pi over 4. Here's pi over 6. Here's um, pi over 2. And then you get these three and another one. And there's this gap in between. I didn't purposely leave it empty. There's actually a gap in between it. The best way to do it is um, twelfths. You can do 1 pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, but I don't want to do that up here. And then it'll go 1, 2, 3, little gap, and I uh, need one more. Way over here. 1, 2, 3, and a gap. So way out here is 2 pi. This is uh, 3 pi over 2. This is pi over pi, 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 pi. and this is pi over 2. And in between it, this of course is pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, uh, three 2 pi over 3, uh, 3 pi over 4, and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So the middle one is always going to be the pi over 4, um, and then the left and right ones alternate as you go over this. Like this one's pi over 6 here, and that one's pi over 6 there on the opposite side. All right, and then we just need to plot these things. So the first one up is pi over 6. Zero. Oh, oh, oh zero, half. yeah, zero, zero, boring. So we start at the origin. At pi over six, half. a half, that's why I like that half in there. Pi over four is square root of two over two, better known as delta 0.7. It actually comes out to be 0.7. So it goes up to about 
point seven. It's like point seven one seven or something like that. All right. Um, pi over three is point eight six, I think. Mm -hmm. Point eight six. So, so that would be a little bit higher. Okay. And then at pi over two, it goes up to one. So we're up here. So if we drop this curve, it looks like that. I didn't plot it perfectly, but you know, that's what happens when you sketch it. Well, I'm kind of plotting it, but not perfect. The next one would be? It's square root of 3 over 3, which is 0.8. The next one is 0.7, a little lower. The next one is that half, and then back to 0. So you get this part of the graph. No, it's definitely not the shape of a circle. It's definitely not the shape of a circle. It doesn't have a, a center or a radius or anything like that. On the other side of pi is 7 pi over 6. It becomes negative 1 half, which is someplace down here. Then it becomes negative 0 0.7, 0 0.86, and then finally negative 1. And then it works its way backwards, 0 0.86, sorry about there, 0.7, this side's not, never looks good to me. It's too far away from the y-axis, and then zero. So you get this part. That's why graph paper is wonderful. Trig graph paper is wonderful for this. What's trig graph paper? It's broken up into pies over 12. I have some, I just don't like printing it off because it's hard to teach people how to graph on it. You can teach us. Yeah. No, it's just Now, is this the entire graph of sine? No. Heck no. Because all I did was I started at zero and I started going in the positive direction. What you other direction could I go? Negative direction. Mm -hmm. I could have went negative. Now, if I went negative, where would the graph go from here? It would go down. It would go down, and eventually it would come back wow. around. Looks pretty good. Too. And if I started at two pi, where would it go? Oh. It would go up, and it would continue on. This graph goes on for ever. ever in both directions because the domain of this function is all real numbers. That means it's going to cover both directions off to infinity. So, um, What's that? Um, like, okay, so this one entire thing, it works with the plus one minus one in the fractions too, huh? Moving okay. wise. Huh? If you add one, it goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, all all transformations work on this sucker. Remember those transformations? Is that why that one is? I wonder if we're going to do it again. We probably are knowing it. Yes. But, so that's basically <laughs> how that one turned out like that? One behind your head? One behind my head. Which one? The blue one. Oh, this one? This one's totally different. And this one is totally different, too. Why? What would make them different? They're different. They don't keep the shape. I know, but... They don't have the same features as this one. Leave it alone. All right. <laughs> basically, what you need to know is the sine graph is cut into four equal pieces on the domain, and it goes up one, and it goes down to negative one. The sine graph starts at the origin. I call it the middle. Why do I call it the middle? Because this is high, this is low, and this happens to be the middle. If you're on the ocean, the middle is more important than anything else, because you don't measure waves from the bottom to the top. You measure it from flat to how high it's going. Mm -hmm. So if they say a wave is 100 foot tall, it's 100 foot off of normal surface. That means the front of the wave face is 200 feet. Oh my gosh, I remember this. I remember this. Yeah. So when you graph a general sketch of a sign, it starts at the origin, and it goes high. Starts at the origin, goes high, middle, low, middle. If you can remember that pattern, you can always draw a nice, decent sine picture. That's pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Two pi. pi. So it goes middle, high, middle, low. That looks middle. nothing like what you drew before. Well, it's not as pretty. Middle, high, middle, low, middle. Is that better? That's oh, yeah. beautiful. Okay, so we should be able to draw, draw the cosine rather quickly. Without doing all of what I just did. The only thing we need for the cosine, since we pretty much know the shape of sine, and we know the fact that the sine of pi over 2 minus x is going to be the same thing as the cosine of x. Why is that true? Wait a minute. Let me 
Yeah, Why is this true? I don't know. Uh, oh, wait, you told us yesterday. Yes, I know. I don't remember. Hold on. I wasn't here. I won't hear. I wasn't either. I have no notes from yesterday. Uh, I do. <laughs> this has a feature because they are called... Uh, Inverses. Co-functions. 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 I always have the property that oh, pi over 2 minus the angle gives you the other one. So, yes. if this is the sine graph, it's being transformed a little bit, but even if it's transformed, it keeps its general shape, so the cosine looks a lot like sine. sine. It has the general up and down type shape of it, just because of the transformation. So the only thing we need to know about sine, or cosine, is all from the unit circle. All from the unit circle. So I'm just going to graph really quickly what the cosine looks like. So let's start. Little sketch, goes up one, goes down negative one. I know that for sure, because the, the range of cosine is also one to negative one. This is going to be cosine of x. And it's going to have the same cuts, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and way out here, 2 pi. Of course, it's going to start at the origin. Well, it's going to start with x equaling 0 first. So, so all I'm going to do is wrap around the unit circle and see where this plots. Start at 0. Cosine is equal to 1. So this one, instead of starting in the middle, is going to start not too high. It's going to start at pi, or top. Then we get to pi over 2, which is here. Which is 0. Which is 0, so it comes to the middle. Then you get to pi over here. Which is negative 1. Which is negative 1, so it'll come way down here, so it goes to the bottom. And 3 pi over 2, it's similar. It's not exactly the same. I mean, they're the same under this equation, so their shape is the same. Um, zero, we're back to the middle, and then 2 pi brings us back to the beginning, which is 1 high. Now, when you graph this, you have to be careful. A lot of people, it comes out of V. It's not a V. You have to remember, if you go back 1, where am I going to start from? The middle, 0. If this is negative pi over 2, it's 0 down here. All right, so the graph goes like this. And it continues on forever in both directions, off to infinity. So why does it start at one? It starts at one because the cosine of zero is one. Remember, cosine is the first coordinate. Oh, yeah, yeah. First cosine is the first coordinate. Ooh, that looks. It's off. Should be here. Right there. There, that looks better. It's that distortion of standing off to the side. So the cosine starts high, goes middle, goes low, goes middle, goes high. And the sine starts in the middle, goes high, goes middle, goes low, goes middle. So they have these patterns that you have to kind of get used to. You need to memorize them. At least the patterns. Isn't it the same pattern? Well, no, no. This one starts high, middle, low, middle, high. This one starts middle, middle and it goes middle, high, middle, 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 low, middle. So there's just a slight difference. One starts high, one starts middle. Ah. <sighs> So, what can we do with the sine and cosine graph? A lot. Yeah, we do crazy things with it. Crazy thing number one. What if we have g of x is equal to negative 2 cosine of x? It does not shrink it. It, it does flip it. I'll give you that. Now, is it affecting the x coordinate or is it affecting the y coordinate? If it was affecting the x, it would be touching it. It better be the y. So if it's affecting the y, all of these ones are going to become twos. And the negative is going to start it instead of high, it's going to start at low. Wait, so it's going to. Just it flips over the y or over the x? It flips over the x-axis. Ah, that flips over the x-axis. That makes it twice as tall, and that's the cosine graph. So when I graph this, here's 1, here's 2, negative 1, negative 2, and then you have your normal four cuts. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 2 pi. It starts at negative 2 because of that negative. It flips it over the x-axis. 
So instead of starting high, this one makes it start yeah. low. So you go low. Then you go, then you go, then you go up. Middle. To where? Middle. 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 High. Then you go high all the way up to two. And then back to middle. middle. And then middle. low. And your graph is going to look something like <laughs> that. So if it was negative one, would it start at negative one? Yes. If it was negative three, it would start at negative three? Yes. If it was three, it would start at three? Yes. If it was if sine, they all start at zero. What if it was five? If it's sine, they all start at zero. Yeah, yeah, it's it's okay. it's 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 yeah negative two sine still starts at zero, but instead of going yeah, up, it would top. go yeah. down. Yeah. They say if, it was, if it was two no. sine, it would go up to two, yeah. right? Yeah. If you have h of x is equal to negative 3 sine of x, what does the negative do? It affects your y's. It affects your y's. So it's going to flip over your x's. 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3 all the way up. And 1, 2, and negative 3 down. Where? Oh, and 1, 2, 3, 4. Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. I'll at least label the last one. 2 pi. 2 pi. Where does the sine graph start? Zero. Zero, zero, the origin, middle. Where does it go when it gets to pi over two? Normally it wants to go up, but because of the negative it's gonna go down. So now it goes middle, low, middle, middle, high, way up to three, middle. So your sine graph will look like this. And off forever in both directions. Isn't that easy? All right, let's do Yeah, you start drawing these things. I'm really worried. Quiz time. I have a quiz. I hope so. Do you don't have a quiz? Yeah, I don't even have the little things out, so no quiz. Okay, good. Okay, can we go home? Didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like it. No, because I had one more type to cover. What if? What if it affects your x? What if it affects your x? Yeah, yeah. that's basically what happens. Um, Remember way back when when we transformed those line segments? You know, yeah, yeah, I had the picture of just the line segments and we squished them and pulled yeah, them. Yeah. Those were horrible, right? Yeah. Really. We're back to it. Those suck. <laughs> <laughs> they basically do, yeah. And so if I have f of x equals like, sine of 2x, did you just say I suck? <laughs> no, I said these are no, she, she said I sucked. Yeah, she did. Who are you joking? I did not say that. I have a horn that I can find out. I did not say that. I said these oh, suck too. Now, when we normally graph a sine or a cosine, we talk about a specific domain. So far, what has my domain been? Well, I know, but the part I graph. The part of the domain I graph. Where do I start? Zero. Zero. Where do I end? Two pi. Two pi. Yeah. That's considered what's uh, in language here a per, uh, period. It starts here at this point and ends at the exact same point two pi away from it. Yeah. And then you, if you did it one more time, it would end at the same depth two pi away from it. So that's called a period. <laughs> Basically, the function is copying itself over every two pi. So when I look at this part here, this is supposed to be my domain. And I'm interested, what happens to this domain if I let the angle go through 0 to 2 pi? It's supposed to start at 0 for my graphing and stop at 2 pi. And then I can just copy it over again. So what you do is you say, well, 2x is going to start at 0, and 2x is going to end at 2 pi. So this will create what's called our new domain. So here, if we solve for x, we get 0. And if we solve for x over here, we get pi. pi. So my new domain, I'm going to start at 0 and end at pi. But it's got to contain the entire graph. It's got to contain the whole, time. The whole up and down part. The points. The 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points that I usually plot. So what I normally do to the x-axis is I cut it into 4 equal pieces. I take 2 pi and I cut it into 4s. So what I need to do to this new period, in this case is equal to pi, I need to cut it into four equal pieces. So you take the period and you cut it into fourths. What's one fourth of pi? Pi over four. Pi over four. Forty five degrees. Better known as forty five degrees. So then you do a new cut and you say, well, I usually start at zero. 
Now I'm going to move over just a hair. A hair, pi over four. A hair. Another pi over four would bring me where? Pi over, over two. two. Alright, pi over four plus pi over four is? Pi over two. Pi over two. Better known as two pi over four. Next one would be? Three pi over four. Three pi over four. Three and the last one would be? Pi. So pi. Pi. Before you get too far, why did you do the one fourth thing? The one fourth is because I always take my domain and cut it into four equal pieces yeah, for the yeah. unit circle. Alright, got that. So the, my new domain stops at pi, but the whole graph has to happen in it. So it's still doing the four pieces. Do you always set it equal to zero and pi? I mean, and you don't have to set it equal to zero because the other one gives you the whole answer. But I need the zero later, but that's for other purposes. It looks, but it looks like you stop at two pi. No, I stop at pi. On the other graph. I do stop at two pi on the other graph. Because there's anything in the parentheses. But opposite whatever's in the parentheses is the angle. And the angle I usually plug in here is 2 pi, mm -hmm. the last one. Right. So if I take the angle that's inside the sine of the function and I set it equal to 2 pi, x is only going to go from 0 to pi, pi and it'll do the full circle. Mm -hmm. If I let x equal 0 to pi, my oh, angle is going to so go from 0 to 2 pi. It's going to go faster. Right. Okay, okay. I just said that. I'm not going to say that. So if I graph this one, Here's um, pi over 4, uh, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, and I'm going to go a little bit further. Uh, what's next? Well, whatever. 1, 2, 3, 4. This would be, this is pi, this is 2 pi. And it goes up 1, and it goes down negative 1. I got a question. Okay. Why, why did you do, why did you use those specific ones for your, your chart? Your chart. Oh, yeah. the chart? Yeah. Because my period is pi, yeah, I but I usually cut it into four pieces because of the unit circle. First quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. All right. So if I cut pi into four pieces, it's pi over four. Yeah, I got that one. Right. So then I start at zero, so my first cut is going to be pi over four. Plus pi over four is two oh, pi over four, yeah. better known as pi over two, and then three pi over four and four pi over four. Okay. So if it was three X and seven. We'll get to that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Don't have time. <laughs> so where does the sign normally start? Zero. 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 So if I want to graph f of x, it would start at zero. At pi over four, that's this first one. Where would it go? It would go up pi. Yeah. At pi over two? Middle. 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 At three pi over four? Uh, Low. Uh, at pi? Back to middle. And then it would just repeat itself. Yeah. So what happens is you get this curve. That wasn't too bad. It's a little quicker. Now if I graph the old one right on top of it, you can kind of see what's going on. The old one is supposed to start here. At pi over 2, it's supposed to be high. At pi That's a little bit off over here. Here's this one. What's that? You don't have the one half. Why is it going to have to squeeze like that? I don't know. It's dying. The 2x changed the blue graph over there. Yeah. It doesn't change the original graph. The original graph starts 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So this is the original graph. The black one. So the black one is the normal graph. It has one so period. Trying. has one period in it. The blue one has how many periods in 2 pi? Mm. Two. One here. Oh, there's you pick two it up. Periods. Two, periods. two periods. So pretty much you can think about this two as making it two periods in one. So if it's three, it would be three periods in one. My chart is not undone. The bottom part is for something else. Wait, that's for something else? That's for my next step, which is going to come tomorrow. But I always draw it just in case. The graph. The graph. This is one period for the blue graph. This is the second period for the blue graph. Because it starts in the middle, ends in the middle. Starts in the middle, ends in the middle. That's two periods. And it's one period for the black one because it starts over here, but it ends way over there to start over again. Not just because it hits zero, because it would start the graph over again.
Oh, that could be going